Here are the top stories for today, July 6, 2022. The central bank assures monetary policies are in place to keep inflation impact at bay as soaring commodity prices continue to take a toll on consumers. Back to school soon, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. says Vice President and DepEd Chief Sara Duterte plans to resume full face-to-face -face learning by November, citing the need to ramp up vaccination among the youth. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi embarks on a visit aimed at fostering stronger cooperation between the Philippines and China under the Marcos administration. And deaths from the shooting that marred Independence Day celebrations in the U.S. state of Illinois has risen to seven. We start with the government's efforts to ease the burden of Filipinos who bear the brunt of soaring consumer prices. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas targets to bring back inflation to a target-consistent path as the rate of movement of consumer prices quickened to 6.1% in June. In a statement, the central bank says June's inflation is still within the forecast of 5.7% to 6.5% range for the month. It also attributed continued price hikes to the unabated rise in global commodity prices and more pronounced second-round effects on domestic goods and services. Slower global economic recovery and COVID-19 curbs due to an uptick in cases are also seen to be downside risks for inflation outlook. Monetary authorities are ready to implement necessary policy actions to ensure price stability and are supportive of the government's non-monetary efforts to mitigate inflationary impacts of supply-side factors. Last month's inflation is the highest in three years and exceeded May's 5.4% rate. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. on Tuesday said the country's rising inflation warrants careful handling and close monitoring as they continue to climb amid higher food and transport costs. Marcos made this remark after the Philippine Statistics Authority announced that Philippine inflation climbed to a three-year high at 6.1% in June from 5.4% in May and 3.7% a year ago. In his first press briefing, Marcos said the country has to be careful because its economic monetary policy right now is essentially to use interest rates to hold and take control of the inflation rate, stressing that this is driven by the increase in commodity prices, which is beyond our control. Earlier, Banco Central ng Pilipinas uh, Governor Felipe Medalla said they may consider bigger interest rate hikes in August to tame inflation and support the peso. Meanwhile, Marcos, who is also the concurrent agriculture secretary, said the government plans to boost the production of staples such as corn and rice in the coming two quarters until Christmas. He reiterated the need for a high priority on the agriculture sector by increasing local production and importing as little as possible to address the looming food crisis in the country. Three more officials from the previous administration are retained in their respective posts. Actor and former Pampanga Governor Mark Lapid will remain as Chief Operating Officer of the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority. Also retained our former media executive Jose Manuel Babes Romualdez as Philippine Ambassador to the United States. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. also retained former Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission. Former Davao del Norte 2nd District Representative Antonio Manuel Lagdameo Jr. is appointed as Ambassador and Permanent Representative of the Philippines to the United Nations. Lagdameo also serves as Marcos's special assistant to the president. Other appointees who also took their oath were Department of Budget and Management Secretary Amena Pangandaman, General Manager and President of the Government Service Insurance System Jose Arnulfo Veloso, and Presidential Security Group Commander and Senior Military Assistant Ramon Zagala. Others who took their oath were former Quirino Representative Juni Kua as Chairperson of the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office, 
Romeo Lumagi Jr. as Deputy Commissioner for Operations of the Bureau of Internal Revenue and former Basilan Governor Abulakani Jerry Salapudin as Administrator and Chairperson of the Southern Philippines Development Authority. Actor Tirsa Cruz III took his oath as Chairperson and Chief Executive of the Film Development Council or FDC and Juan Revilla as a member of the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board or MTRCB. The government targets to resume face-to-face -face classes in full by November. As such, COVID-19 vaccination in the country will be further ramped up, especially among the youth. As of July 3, about 78.64% of the country's target population are already fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Despite the presence of Omicron subvariants in the country, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said he is confident that his administration could defeat COVID-19. He also acknowledged that people with COVID-19 booster shots have stronger immunity against Omicron subvariants. On Tuesday, the Department of Health gave the green light on the booster shots for ages 12 to 17 years old. The government is mulling the expansion of the fuel subsidy program to include tricycle drivers. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said tricycle drivers have been left out of the program that assists the transport sector amid the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic and the continuous oil price hikes. Late last month, the Department of the Interior and Local Government announced that over 600,000 tricycle drivers nationwide will be receiving fuel subsidy. We just discussed that uh, we are going to try not only to continue the fuel subsidies for the transport sector, but to expand it to include the tricycles, uh, which up to now have not been included. We have enough budget, I think, to last for most of this, no, for this year and a little bit beyond. Uh, but we still have to find that, we have to find that money if we're going to continue. Meanwhile, free ride is extended for students taking the LRT2. Free ride at the EDSA bus carousel, which expired on June 30, is also extended until December 2022. The Libring Sakai continues as is. Uh, that, that, that continues. Uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to do a, uh, uh, a program for the students. Because if they come in, we will fully subsidize first their, uh, their Pamasai. We'll phase it out because we cannot afford to keep that going. But students will ride for free on LRT2, which is going to the, uh, going to the university belt. In Ilocos Norte, all eligible drivers and operators of public utility transport will continue to get financial assistance. The provincial government and the local finance council allotted almost 10 million pesos in cash assistance to jeepney and tricycle drivers to help them deal with the rising fuel prices. Metro Ilocos Norte Council Althea Nicolette Pilar said each tricycle driver will be given at least 4,000 pesos cash aid. Meanwhile, over 1,000 jeepney operators and drivers have received their cash aid. This is apart from the Pantawid Pasada program which the national government set up to help the public utility drivers struggling with the oil price hikes. Still ahead, another victim in the 4th of July shooting in Illinois dies. And the National Economic Development Authority, or NEDA, says all efforts are in place to ease the burden of rising inflation to consumers. We'll be back after a quick break. Keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Maganda 
Ako po si Sergeant Munoz ng Philippine Air Force para sa kampanya na disiplina muna na pinangungunahan ng DILG. Proud po akong sabihin na bakunado na ako laban sa COVID-19. Kaya naman po panatag ang aking kalooban dahil alam ko na protektado ako at ang aking pamilya laban sa coronavirus. Bida ang may disiplina. Kaya naman magparehistro at magpabakuna na para sa ligtas na pamilya at ligtas na bayan. In our foreign news, the death toll from a 4th of July Independence Day parade shooting in the U.S. state of Illinois has risen to seven. The shooting, which took place in Highland Park City, also left 24 others injured. Police arrested suspected shooter 22-year-old Robert Cremo III. The gunman purchased the firearm legally and fired more than 70 rounds into the crowd. He was dressed in women's clothing and used a high-powered rifle to fire bullets from the roof of a building into the crowd. The firearm was recovered at the scene. President Joe Biden earlier ordered that the flag be flown half-mast on all public buildings and grounds as a mark of respect for the victims. The local government expressed concern on the rising COVID-19 cases in Antique as residents are no longer conscious of minimum health protocols. Antique's Integrated Provincial Health Office, or IPHO, said 49 new cases were logged in 14 of the 18 towns of the province last Monday, the highest number of cases recorded since its clean record on May 31. IPO Information Officer Irene Dulduco explained that the surge is due to the residents being too complacent to follow physical distancing, wearing of masks, and hand washing since their province was placed under Alert Level 2 in April. The 49 residents tested positive are from the municipalities of San Jose de Buena Vista, Hamtik, Sibalom, Kulasi, Pandan, Sebaste, Tobias Fournier, Anini'i, Barbaza, Bugasong, Lawaan, Patnongon, Tibia, and Valderrama. Dulduco also urged the residents to get their jabs at the 18 municipal vaccination sites for their protection. On the whole population of Antique, 326,205 or 64.92% of them are already fully vaccinated, while 37,926 or 7.55% of them have received their booster shots. The province of Lanao del Norte celebrated its 63rd founding anniversary with a mass oath-taking of its newly elected officials. They vowed to promote peace and unity and work together to develop and uplift the province. Claire Gike has the story. As part of the celebration of 63rd Araw ng Lanao del Sur, the province here held a mass oath-taking ceremony for its newly elected officials before the presence of Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri, who graced and administered the event. During the oath-taking, representatives of the two congressional districts of Lanao del Sur, Congressman Zia Uroman Adyong and Congressman Yasar Balindo, both called for unity to push forward the development of the province. After the oath-taking, Governor Mamintal Adyong Jr. delivered his inaugural message summarizing his agenda for his first 100 days in office, which focuses on energy, economy, agriculture, employment, tourism, social welfare, environment, and infrastructure development. Tuli natin itataas ang pamantayan ng ating serbisyo publiko at palawakin ang mga programa na palang nakatoon sa pag-angat ng antas ng pamumuhay ng ating mga nasasakupan. Sa nakaraang tatlong taon, Dumaan tayo sa pagsubok at tagumpay, ngunit na napili tayo nakatutok sa pagpapatupad ng ating programa. Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri likewise faced the people of Lano del Sur, whom he thanked for their support during the elections. He then committed to help the province and provide whatever is needed in the area. 
we will create once again the special committee on Marawi rehabilitation at isasama na natin compensation. Marawi rehab and compensation. And we will make sure that we will have weekly meetings and hearings para may appoint ang mga members ng compensation board at mabigyan ng pondo for 2023 ang compensation bill na yan. As your Senate President, bilang Senate President ninyo, I will do my best to make it a reality. Meanwhile, a grand fireworks display and free back-to-back -back concert of Salbakuta and Chocolate Factory highlighted the celebration of the 63rd founding anniversary of the province of Lano del Norte. The celebration started with the planting of trees by the officials and employees of the province at Mount Torong Toro. Moreover, a trade fair also showcased the products of Lano del Norte producers' cooperative and other local traders in the province. During the celebration, the governor also called for the unity and cooperation of the residents. While the province remains to be under alert level 2 due to low vaccination rate, efforts have been made to make the celebration meaningful and vibrant. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Giga of the Philippine Information Agency, Lano del Sur. Malacanang has declared July 9, Saturday, a regular holiday in observance of Idil Adha. The declaration is contained in Proclamation No. 2, signed by Executive Secretary Vic Rodriguez, released earlier today. Adil Adha is one of the two major holidays in Islam, which marks the culmination of the Hajj rites at Minya, Saudi Arabia near Mecca, but is celebrated by Muslims throughout the world. The festival is celebrated on the 10th day of the last month of the Islamic calendar and continues for an additional three days. It commemorates the willingness of Abraham to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to God's command. The government is committed to ensuring a stable food supply and mitigating the impact of rising commodity prices amid the global energy crisis. The National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, said the government must fast-track its policies so Filipinos can still travel to work and bring food to their tables. Among such measures is the Livestock Development and Competitiveness Bill, which is proposed to modernize the livestock, poultry, and corn sectors in the country. The Department of Social Welfare and Development also started the distribution of the first tranche of the targeted cash transfer program on July 4. The Libring Sakai program for the EDSA bus carousel has been extended until December 2022 and from August 22 to November 4, 2022 for school year 2022 to 2023. More stories from the newsroom. A red tide warning is raised in five areas in the country. And the nation's last frontier celebrates its heritage through the Baragatan Festival. Details ahead, stay with the PNA Newsroom. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin ang mga dapat gawin sa lugar ng trabaho laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ang mga kumpanya ay dapat magbigay ng face mask sa kanilang mga empleyado. Bukod dito, magbigay kaalaman din patungkol sa COVID-19. Siguraduhing malinis ang kapaligiran. Maglagay ng sabon at hand sanitizer sa mga palikuran. Siguraduhing ligtas at nalutong maigi ang mga pagkain sa kantina. Obserbahan ang kalusugan ng mga empleyado at katrabaho. 
Kung sakali man na mayroon silang sintomas ng coronavirus disease, gaya ng lagnat, ubot sipon, at hirap sa paghinga, ay agad ipasuri sa doktor. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. hopes to strengthen the ties between China and the Philippines with his upcoming meeting with Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Marcos said the territorial disputes at the West Philippine Sea, as well as the renewal of cooperation in various fields, will be discussed during his meeting with Wang. He stressed that there are other matters that need to be touched on to normalize the relationship between the Philippines and China. Wang accepted the invitation of Foreign Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo to visit the Philippines on July 5 and 6. Earlier today, Wang visited the main office of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Among the topics they discussed are maintaining and building on the positive trend of relations between the two countries. Wang Yi is the first foreign counterpart received by Manalo after assuming office. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, urged the public not to consume shellfish harvested from five water areas that tested positive for paralytic shellfish poison or red tide. Speaking at the Laging Handa public briefing, BFAR Chief Information Officer Nazer Rigera identified the areas detected with red tide beyond regulatory limits. The five water bodies are the coastal waters of Milagros Masbate, coastal waters in Dawis, Tagbilaran City, Bohol, Dumaquillas Bay in Zamboanga del Sur, Litalit Bay San Benito in Surigao del Norte, and Lianga Bay in Surigao del Sur. Rigera said all kinds of shellfish including mussels, oysters, and even tiny shrimps from these areas are not safe to eat. However, he added that fish, squid, shrimps, and crabs are consumable as long as they are fresh, cleaned thoroughly, and cooked well. Meanwhile, BFAR assured the public that there will be enough supply of fish in the country as they increase production by distributing bigger boats to local fisher folk to help them increase their catch. The push of former communist rebels in a town in Samar towards leading new lives will get another boost. This is through a peace village set to rise in the town of San Jose de Buan. The Philippine Army's 87th Infantry Battalion says discussions with possible location owners and efforts to secure funding for the project are underway. Through the help of various government agencies, also seen to rise in the village are a training facility and a farm lot for agricultural production and livelihood activities. It will also provide homes for former New People's Army rebels from nearby towns. The town is among the NPA stronghold in the province. Palawan, one of the best travel spots in Asia, showcased to the world its recovery from crisis with the staging of the Baragatan, the province's largest festival. The month-long festival that happens every June celebrates Palawan's culture and traditions. Its highlights is the Saraotan Sadalan, the street dance event featuring the province's best features. Palawan staged the Baragatan for the first time since 2019 when the COVID-19 pandemic shut down all travel and tourism. Just as it was opening its doors again to visitors, Typhoon Odette devastated towns and tourist spots in the province in December 2021. Today, destinations such as El Nido, Honda Bay and the Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park are slowly rebuilding their boats and other attractions. The Palawan Tourism Council says with Palawan's borders reopened, the Baragatan is only one of many things in the province that visitors are sure to come back for. 